Could Graham Hancock be correct? Could there have been an ancient super civilization that existed around the time of the last ice age that went out across the world sending out envoys that created a lot of the ancient civilizations that we now know? Hi folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Gladiatoria. Now this is somewhat off topic for my channel as many of you will realise. However, yesterday I put a video up about Graham Hancock's methodology and why I have certain issues with his attitudes towards archaeology uh, and archaeologists, um, how he interacts with them and also some issues I have with traditional historians as well. But check out that video if you haven't seen it. Now, one of the things that came out is uh, people wanted me to follow up with some specific um, responses and uh, thoughts on some of his theories. And I thought, you know what, this isn't going to become the Graham Hancock response channel. Um, so I'm primarily a military historian and that's what I will be mostly sticking to. However, overall, if you read all of Graham Hancock's works and you watch the recent Netflix um, series that uh, he's put up and has been extremely popular and is very entertaining, incidentally, and I enjoyed watching. If you watch that, the basic conclusion of a lot of the things that he works around to is that there was a super civilization based on the continent of what we now know as Antarctica before that was covered in an ice sheet and that that ancient civilization, a bit like Atlantis, sent out envoys um, to various parts of the world that gave the inspiration for lots of the ancient civilizations that we now know through archaeology and history. Now, compelling idea though that is, um, for anyone who likes um, stories like the Lost World or the Land That Time Forgot and all of these things that I grew up with, is that at all plausible? Could there have been an ancient uh, super civilization based in Antarctica around the time of the end of the last ice age, so about 12,000 years ago? Well, I'm going to unpack that question slightly. First of all, could there have been a, a very influential civilization uh, around at the time of the ending of the last ice age that we don't know about? Yes, okay, fundamentally, absolutely, we're discovering new things all the time about the ancient world. And yes, absolutely, there could have been a influential civilization which possibly gave rise to some of these myths um, about whether it's Atlantis or whether it's, uh, which, you know, obviously we know about mainly through Plato, um, or indeed uh, some of the common kind of god myths or um, stories, creation stories that we find in various cultures. Yes, absolutely, it could be that there were some wayfaring people who influenced a large number of people across a wide area in the ancient world that we don't yet know about because we haven't yet discovered where their civilization is. And anybody who's studied the um, origins of uh, Troy, uh, the Troy um, stories, for example, will know of a good example of that. There was a point at which Troy was thought to just be a myth, and now we know that it was based on something. So yes, absolutely, there could be an ancient civilization that uh, all of these things are based on. But at that point, I want to point out a kind of elephant in the room with Graham Hancock's whole override theory that all of these civilizations we know about stem from this one civilization that we don't have much evidence for and the problem is is that his own argument is that civilization doesn't spring out of nothing it doesn't come fully formed out of nothing so where did all these civilizations come from but the problem it was with his logic and with his reasoning is that he doesn't then apply that to the civilization that he claims existed before those and that these all stem from. So where did that civilization come from? And if you're saying that civilization doesn't spring out of nowhere like that, then where's the, where's the thing that came before the civilization that he is saying those other civilizations came from. If there was this one Atlantis-like civilization with great super technology uh, for its time, um, obviously not televisions and aeroplanes or anything like that, but obviously w with a, a great degree of, um, you know, uh, navigation skills or perhaps um, building skills, farming skills, things like this that they convey to other civilizations. If that existed, where is the progress? Where is the lead up? Where is the build up, the evolution that came to build that civilization? So it's quite obvious that one of the ways of getting around that question is to say, oh, well, 
it was in the Antarctic uh, because that's covered in very, very thick ice that we can't examine. So you could say, oh, well, that evolved, it developed purely on the continent of Antarctica, what we now call Antarctica, before it was covered in ice. Um, and therefore that we don't have the evidence, we don't have the archaeological evidence to show that buildup of civilization before there was a a catastrophe, a you know, a climate um, a disaster, and they dispersed into the world and took what they knew about farming and building and religion and these kind of things to other cultures and gave them to other cultures. So it's a get out, isn't it? It's a get out because you can't demonstrate any lead up to that super civilization because it's hidden under ice. So final question, is it possible that there was a large human or very um, important human culture based on Antarctica. So let's talk about Antarctica for a second. So currently, Antarctica is roughly the size of the United States plus Mexico. Pretty big, okay? In some places, the ice is up to three miles thick on Antarctica. And 90%, 90% of the world's ice is in Antarctica. This is a big icy lump, and even in summer, it's very rare for the temperatures to get above freezing. Now, there are some exposed bits of land in Antarctica, particularly islands on the coastal line, stuff like this, and paleontologists do go there searching for fossils to find out more about the land that's underneath, in some cases three miles underneath the ice, um, and find out about its far, far back fossil record information. And in some cases, they are there for weeks hunting for fossils before they find anything. Not really, Antarctica has no trees at all. It only has mosses and lichens and only two species of flowering plants. However, paleontologists do find fossil evidence of things like leaves and parts of trees and, and various foliage from millions and millions of years ago. So absolutely, it is categorically a fact that there was green verdant life on the landmass that we now call Antarctica if we go back millions and millions of years. And indeed, there's a very rich fossil record there of things like beech trees. We're talking about deciduous trees that you might find in New York or London across Europe, and we find them absolutely in places like Nelson Island, um, beaches that are revealing fossils in Antarctica. You can find them today, but we're talking about forests 83 million years ago. We're talking about the time of the dinosaurs. So absolutely, when we're talking about tens of millions of years ago, the time of the dinosaurs, absolutely there were deciduous forests, um, temperate, a completely different climate, completely different environment on the land mass that we now call Antarctica. And in fact, paleontology has clearly demonstrated that if we go back this far, then the land mass that we now call Antarctica was attached to South America, more or less where Chile is. And there's no difference in the paleontology uh, in terms of the geology between Chile and Antarctica. They broke apart and moved apart. But this is, of course, way, way before human history. So when did Antarctica become a frozen over mass that it currently is today? Well, quite simply, it seems that the shift happened about 34 million years ago. Not 34,000, 34 million years ago. Long, long before humans existed. Um, so that is when the uh, climate changed, essentially, and the North and South Pole became the very, very cold regions that we're familiar with today. If we go back 100,000 years, for example, so well into human history, then we find that most modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, were living in, or in fact, all of them um, were living in Africa. And as far as we know, they hadn't yet made contact with the Neanderthals, an earlier form of hum uh, hu um, humanoid um, hominid that had moved out of Africa, moved into what's now Europe, for example. Um, and as far as we know, there hadn't yet been in contact between those two groups. Now, obviously, geology uh, is a science and there's continually growing knowledge and understanding, and also there's rival theories or rival interpretations of the data, fully accepting of that. As far as I can tell from everything that I've been able to read, it seems that the last time that Antarctica was ice-free was about 14 million years ago, so long before uh, modern humans were around. So. Coming to the final conclusion here, was Antarctica ice-free or even partially ice-free at the end of the last ice age about 12,000 years ago? Um, no, 
Okay, so when we're looking at these very, very interesting uh, maps, Renaissance maps, which might go back to um, be copied from earlier maps, they might be copied from earlier medieval maps, which themselves, the theory goes, might possibly be copied from uh, earlier, perhaps even Roman era maps, perhaps even older than that. Um, if, if that was the case, and they show a landmass that is ice-free at the bottom, does that mean it's Antarctica? No, not necessarily. Or it could mean that they know there's a landmass down there, um, but they've never seen it, so they don't know whether it's got ice or anything else on it. They just know there's a landmass down there. Who knows? But the fact is that scientifically, according to all of the paleontology, all of the geology, all of the archaeology, as far as we can tell, there was no fertile land unfrozen on Antarctica within the last tens of thousands of years, possibly millions of years. And indeed, yes, some bits of modern Antarctica are ice free, increasingly so as it happens at the moment, because of course it's melting. Um, some of it's ice free, but it's completely barren. Only two types of flowering plant, no trees, there's, there's nothing there. And to find paleontology, to find fossil record of life, uh, you have to go down a long, long way. And the only thing living there really are penguins and fish. So to conclude, is Graham Hancock's theory that there was a super civilization, an Atlantis-like group of people living on a ice-free Antarctica or part of ice-free Antarctica um, between 10 and 12,000 years ago, is it at all plausible? I would say no. It's completely implausible. Um, based on where human civilizations grew up um, in fairly, uh, you know, relatively warm places, the where there were trees growing and where there was abundant um, food and water and things like this, even if humans were somehow on Antarctica at that time, it seems extremely unlikely that they would have the ability to create civilization <laughs> that would somehow spread out from there. It seems one of the most disadvantaged places on earth for humans to try and survive at that time or at any other time during human history. So is it possible that some civilizations did have a common source of information and inspiration, that these Quetzalcoatl uh, type uh, characters came from other places? Absolutely that's possible. Absolutely it's possible that certain civilizations were the result of other civilizations that went before. The Greeks, for example, always credit the Egyptians with their, um, with their knowledge. Um, and of course there were various civilizations that the Egyptians uh, received lots of knowledge from before them as well. And, and so on and so forth and it goes back. So the fundamental theory that civilizations give rise to other civilizations, perfectly fine, don't have a problem with it. But Antarctica? Come on, that's just a get out because by saying Antarctica, it's not possible to investigate whether there's archaeology there because there isn't, um, but it's not possible to see, okay? So it's a, essentially it's a get out, it's a way of covering yourself and of saying, hey, look, this super civilization, it obviously existed in that place that we can't possibly verify. That's my view anyway. I'd be welcome, uh, you're very welcome to post your views below and I'm very um, happy to read your ideas about this whole thing um, uh, and get posting in the comments below, um, it's always fun reading and discussing this stuff. Thanks a lot for watching and um, I will see you back on the channel again really soon for probably some more of my usual content talking about military history and arms and armour. Cheers a lot folks. Thanks for watching, we've got extra videos on Patreon, please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.